Folks, it's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician here, making another video for you out of Boise, Idaho. Um, today we are looking at and diagnosing a 2014 Honda Accord. I kind of like these newer Hondas. Boy, they, they've really done a good job with these newer Hondas. They, uh, when, they, when you get them fully loaded, they are extremely nice. So this Honda Accord has the push push button start I thought it was funny the owner called it the ignite button I kind of like calling it the ignite button also so this Honda has the ignite button inside of there and so the complaint is when they go to start the vehicle it just clicks they can hear the starter clicking and they have to try two or three different times to try to get it to start now, even though this is a newer modern vehicle, some of the age-old principles still apply. If you hear a starter clicking, it could be anything from a bad starter to a battery that's going bad. So I don't right off the bat suspect it is a battery because again, uh, the complaint is I try to start my vehicle, I try to start it one time, it just clicks, I try to start it two times, it just clicks, and then uh, all of a sudden it'll start. So if the battery was really bad, it'd get to the point to where the starter wouldn't engage at all and you wouldn't be able to push it three or four times to get it to start. So again, right off the bat, using kind of process of elimination, uh, I don't think it's the battery, but we should still test the battery anyways to make sure. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. All right, so I'm set up to test my battery. Now I'm not gonna test the battery while it's connected to the car. I went ahead and disconnected the battery. I wanna test the battery standalone by itself. So let's go ahead and check that out. My multimeter's going crazy right now because I'm touching it and all kinds of stuff. So one of the first steps in your starter diagnosis on your push start Honda Accord, Honda Civic, no matter what you have, is to eliminate a bad battery. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So you're gonna disconnect your battery, and you're gonna take your positive lead for your multimeter, you're gonna set it to 12 volts, you're gonna stick it on the positive side, and then you take negative, and you're gonna stick it on the negative side. Now this bat battery standalone is coming in at 12.5, 12.6 volts. So, we're in good shape there, actually. And it, what I've done is since the car was running and stuff to ensure that it wasn't showing the charge from the alternator, I went ahead and I've let this battery in this vehicle sit disconnected for about 20, 30 minutes. So after 20, 30 minutes, stand alone, the battery test at 12.5, 12.6 volts. If you were at 12.3, or if you're at 12 or 11.9 or anything like that, I would say we might want to change the battery. But this battery seems to be testing just fine. So now I'm going to go ahead and reconnect the battery. Okay, and I'm doing this. Now, just to make sure there's not any type of parasitic draw or anything like that that's running our battery down while the vehicle is sitting overnight and then causing a hard or no start condition. But, and I'm just doing this to be cautious. This is mainly for my customer it's to ins absolutely ensure that we're not having to deal with a battery. I would hate to change the starter for any reason whatsoever and then have it still act up because the battery showed to be bad in any form or fashion. So it's mainly for me, it's mainly for my customer so we can know that all process of elimination has been done and we know exactly what the problem is. Okay, and while connected to the car, we don't see a draw or a drain on it. We're still above 12.5, and so 
I really think we're good. I really don't think it's an issue with the battery. So now I'm gonna get in it and I'm gonna try to see if I can duplicate what the vehicle is doing for you. Get my camera in a better spot and hopefully maybe you can hear it. All right, so let's get in there. Let's see if we can duplicate the problem, which just kind of let you know right now, I've already duplicated the problem multiple times this morning, but I just want to try to do it for you guys on the video so you can have some reference and see. Okay, so hopefully on the video you guys are able to hear that click. That is definitely the starter trying to engage, but it's not. It really does sound like the solenoid is hanging up in there. So I'm going to take you underneath the car and I'm going to show this to you. Okay, so hopefully you guys got some good lighting there. So where my hand is, right here, if you can see that, this is where our starter is. It's this axle. So actually right here is your drain plug. Uh, this is terrible. I apologize for the camera. As you guys know, I do this on my own. I'm not a cameraman. So right here is your drain plug. Go straight up and to the left, and you'll see your starter. It's just right up in there. And you're probably wondering, how in the world do I even begin to get that out of there? I'm going to show you. One of the first things we're going to do is we're going to remove this plate right here. Okay, so if you're doing this job, you're going to see a heat shield that's protecting these wires. So we're definitely going to uh, be getting those wires removed. Let's go ahead and crawl out from underneath the car. I'm going to leave the video running and see if I can get you a better shot and of what that sound is. That way, if you're diagnosing your own vehicle, you can compare it. All right, so I know at this point you guys had a good chance to hear that click. So at this point, when I did get it running, I was able to test the battery. I was able to test the alternator. Those are starting and charging just fine. The battery standalone, as you saw, is just fine. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work on removing this starter. So the first thing I'm going to do is, again, this, this heat shield right here. I'm gonna get that removed. Also, there's a bracket. If you can see my hand, there's a bracket right here with uh, 10 millimeter bolts for the intake. We're gonna remove this bracket and we're gonna remove this heat shield. So you're looking at eight millimeter and 10 millimeter. Okay, so now I've removed, and I apologize, I said eight millimeter. For this shield and these wires, it's a 10 millimeter. And as you can see, I got it removed and it does have a plug underneath there. So you're gonna wanna get you a mechanics pick or something and just get up underneath there, lift that tab up and this is going to re remove your plug there. This, you are doing this so you can get the room you need to get that starter cleared out so you can move these wires out of the way. All right, and so now we are going to just kind of set that aside there and we're gonna go after that bracket. If you can see, 
that bracket right there. You see those two, those two nuts. So actually, those look like what do those look like? Twelves. Those look like twelve or thirteen millimeter nuts. So you can have two there. And then you're gonna have one inside of there, and we're gonna get that bracket out of the way next. Okay, so now you can kind of see I got that bracket out, and if I pan over here. It's giving me the room I needed to move some of my electrical connections out of the way that are going to be in the way. So because that bracket is no longer there, I've been able to take this electrical connection and push it out of the way. Okay. And it's also opened up a lot of room up in there to get that starter out. All right. So now my next move is going to be... If you see right there, that little eight millimeter bolt, uh, right here, okay. So you've got more electrical connections. There's a little clip right here, and you're gonna press the little clip up, and then you're gonna pull your electrical connections off of this bracket, and then go ahead and get this bracket out of the way. So that way it doesn't hinder you or cause problems when you're trying to remove your starter. So in this time, it will be an eight millimeter bolt, little bolt there. So go ahead and get an eight millimeter ratchet or wrench or what have you, and then go ahead and get that removed. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna reach up right above here, okay? And right on top of that starter, You'll be able to see it will be your first connector. So it's not hard to get. I kind of have big hands myself. You just got to get your finger in there, push down on the tab, and pull it out. Okay, and that gives you the room here. You will see a second connector. We're not going to go after that until we get the starter partially out. So now you're going to have two bolts. There's going to be one way up top. All right, and it's gonna be, if you see where my finger is, it's gonna be above all that. It will be sticking out partially. I'm gonna see if I can get a shot in here for you. Okay, you see it right there? Oh, come on, right there. That's actually it. And actually, it may be better to get you into here to show you. And if you're fighting this, if you're struggling with it, don't fret. Don't get stressed out. This is going to be a wrestling match. Trust me. And so that bolt, it's going to be right up in here. Okay, right where my finger is. You see it? There's the right there, okay? Move this out of the way. It's poking out right there okay so that's a 14 millimeter go after that one first use a flex head ratchet if you have one and then your second bolt is going to be right here okay so you're gonna have this one and then that other one up top that i showed you all right, they're both gonna be 14 millimeters. Go after that one first. So again, just to recap, we've removed this shield and this wiring here. We've removed the bracket for the intake. We've removed our electrical connection that kind of sits on the top, but off to the side a little bit for our solenoid. Now we're gonna go after our 14 millimeter bolt so we can take the starter down and we can get the final electrical connection that's gonna be on the very top that's buried back there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that taken care of next. Okay, and so now that I got those two 14 millimeter bolts out, I've got the starter pulled. And this is why we, we removed the bracket and that extra plug behind that shield because you're gonna need to pull it out and then you're gonna kinda need to jimmy it and twist it around so you can get a 12 millimeter socket onto this battery connection right here, okay? So it's okay to just let the starter hang in there 
for right now. So you're going to want a 12 millimeter socket to get the battery connection off. Okay, and so like I said, once you get those two 14 millimeter bolts disconnected, here's the hole for your starter right in there. Okay, you see it. So once you get those two 14 millimeter bolts disconnected, you can pull your starter out. Now remember, you want to disconnect this wire first, and then you will have the room that you need to pull your starter out and twist it around so you can get this battery connection off, and that's going to be a 12 millimeter. So from start to finish here, as far as removal goes, two 10 millimeter bolts to remove the heat shield and this plug connector, that's going to give you room to move those wires out of the way. And then from there, you're going to go up top. All right. And you're going to move, remove your, you see the two studs right there. You're going to remove the bracket for your intake. So heat shield and wires, bracket for intake, then reach up and disconnect your plug. Then you will have two 14 millimeter bolts. Remember, there's going to be one up top and then one on the bottom. Pull your starter out, twist it around, remove your battery uh, connection. And then through this cavity right here, the one that you created by removing that bracket is where you're going to pull the starter out. And I'll go ahead and show you that starter here in just a second. All right, and this is what your Honda starter will look like. Okay, there's your electrical connections, in case you were wondering. And I just wanted to show you this. This is that extra long top bolt. So that's what that's going to look like as well. So now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to bench test this starter. But one thing I want to point out is I have had starters that while they are installed on the car, not want to work, but, but then go ahead and pass its bench test. Starters can be a hard thing to diagnose and figure out sometimes, especially on these cars that have push start buttons and stuff. There's a brake switch involved that needs to that you need to make sure everything is okay with also. So, but uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and bench test this starter, and then more than likely go ahead and get me another starter to get installed, and that should fix this problem. So, mainly just wanted to show you what it takes to uninstall the starter on your 2014 Honda Accord, Honda Civic. If you have any questions about this job or any other job that you got going on, shoot them to me in the comments. Let's trade emails. Let's trade phone numbers. I really enjoy helping you guys out. I also enjoy seeing you guys help other people out when they ask questions on my YouTube channel and stuff like that. So I really appreciate all of your support and for taking the time to hang out and watch this video. This is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, signing off.